Chapter 7 starts us out on page 64 and is titled September 1958. I opened the door and stumbled backwards. Florinda stood with two suitcases at her feet. What the hell was she doing in England? And why hadn't the manager let me know I had a visitor? She jumped into my arms, almost bowling me over. I'm so happy to see you. Tears trickled down her face and into my hair. What are you doing here? I asked. I thought you understood that from my last letter I've I left home like you. What on earth are you going on about? I didn't get any letter from you. I I've come to be with you. I, I miss you so much. I grabbed her suitcases and carried them into the factory flats, clasping and unclasping my fists around the leather handles. You are pleased to see me, aren't you? Florinda asked. I dropped the cases and turned to her. Of course I am, but how could you leave Mama with no one to help around the house? Despite her visible exhaustion, Florinda stuck out her chin and crossed her arms. How could you... Did you worry how Mama would cope? No, you didn't. Because you knew I'd be around to help. My breath caught in my throat. Lorinda was right. Mama would have her to count on. With that worry out of the way, I'd been free to get on with my plans. Remorse hit my chest as I imagined our mother grieving over two runaway daughters. Alone in the kitchen, cooking for the family with no one to talk to, no one to help. A lump formed in, my, in the back of my throat. I blinked back my tears and kept my eyes on Florinda's disheveled figure. Her knotted auburn curls stuck out on end. It didn't look as if a comb had been through them for a long while. Her puffy eyes spoke a, to a lack of sleep and her cheeks were drawn. She had to be hungry, hot, and tired. Hadn't I gone through the same dusty journey? How did you manage to get your paper so quickly? I've only been gone three months, I asked, breaking the awkward silence in the corridor leading to the flat, still trying to come to terms with the fact that Florinda was in England. Like you did, I suppose. I went to the same agency in Tor and Unzenyata. They were still looking for workers in England, so I applied. They organized everything, and here I am. Her face shifted into a huge smile. If my younger sister can run away from home, why shouldn't I? I let out a huge sigh and raised my eyes to the ceiling. You're grinding your teeth, Bianca. I always did that when I was confused, and to top it all off, my head began to thump. Please, not a headache. Not now. In front of the flat, I pulled the key out of my pocket and pushed it into the lock. The door swung open, and we entered. Illabite. Hey there. How the heck are you? I'm so glad you could come by. Since the last occupants had moved out a month earlier to work in London, the manager had put up the three girls from the Tor and Zuniata together. Me, Anna, and Ornella. It suited us fine. We had a place to ourselves and it smelled fresh. We'd made sure to clean it thoroughly before moving in, and we had a lock on the door guaranteeing privacy. I dropped my sister's cases to the floor and peered around the bedroom, hands on my hips. Did they say in which flat you were staying? No, but I told them I wanted to stay with you. With a bit of luck, 
and if we moved the narrow beds around strategically, we could squeeze in another one for Florinda. I'd have to arrange that with the manager. I reckon she'd agree. The old dear had a soft spot for me. Hadn't she given me a cushier job? Instead of working in the warehouse where the machines washed fruit, and I had to wear boots to keep my feet dry, she transferred me to the factory where I made up boxes for the tins. It's lovely here, Florinda said, opening the cases I'd hauled onto my bed. I'll make us a drink. A few minutes later, I returned from the kitchen with two cups of strong coffee. We both needed one. I put my sister's cup on the bedside table and sipped my drink. Not a word left my mouth. We both remained silent. Relaxing before my drive to Tennessee tomorrow? Ah, lovely. Hopefully it's not a long drive. How's the mama? I asked after a while. Not good, Florinda replied. Her morale's taken a dive. My sister made herself comfy on my bed, back against the bedrest, knees drawn up to her chin. What she had to say would be serious. She propped her chin onto her knees and stared at her feet. Vittorio left for Venezuela. I raised an eyebrow. Why would he want to go there? To live with his wife? Cup dropped out of my hand and crashed to the floor, coating the tiles with the rest of my coffee. She had to be joking. Where had this piece of news popped up from? And why hadn't I known about it? Florinda leapt off the bed and dashed for a cloth in the kitchen. I know, it's hard to believe, she called over her shoulder. It came as a huge shock to all of us, especially Papa. On hands and knees, she picked up the pieces and mopped up the coffee. I simply watched, unable to move, unable to think straight. Gradually, my brain came back to life, struggling to comprehend what Florinda had said. Vittorio was living in Venezuela. Why there, for Christ's sake? I regained the use of my legs and collapsed onto the bed. That's how I felt, my sister said, placing the broken cup into the bin and throwing the cloth into the nearby bucket. It was a huge kick in the gut for a mama too. She broke into tears, asking God what she'd done to deserve losing her children one after the other. Papa remained calm, although a vein throbbed in his neck. Poor mama. Would she ever get over the shock? I imagined her swaying back and forth in her rocking chair, praying to the Lord, tormenting herself, blaming herself for everything. What exactly happened, Florinda? My sister was sat next to me and wrapped her arm around my shoulder. I think it began months ago, before you left even. Vittorio was seeing Silvia. I know. I saw them together a couple of times. Well, she got pregnant. Christ Almighty. What had Vittorio been thinking about? Going against Papa's wishes? He'd been told more than once to stop sniffing around the women. He obviously hadn't listened. Does he really love her? I asked. That's not the point. He got Celia pregnant, so they married. A quick wedding without any fuss. Papa didn't even go, nor did he give him his blessing. How did Mama take all this? Lorinda patted my leg. Badly. No sooner had she come to terms with the fact that Vittorio had married Silvia, then he dropped the second bomb on us. He was going to Venezuela. Why there? I think it was our brother's way of getting his own back. I overheard Papa telling him to get out of his sight. That he no longer considered him to be his son. 
You know, the usual dramatic papa, my sister said, waving her arms in the air. Besides, Sylvia has family there. I slid off the bed and paced the room. Serves the best out right. It's about time he ate a bit of the poison he'd been happy for us to swallow. Florinda's bottom lip started to quiver. He's in the same boat as us, Bianca. Only we chose our fate. He didn't. I clenched my fists, feeling no sympathy. That's not true, and you know it. He chose to marry Sylvia. Only because she got pregnant. Don't you think he'd rather stay in Italy? Wouldn't you rather be home, Bianca? Lorinda took my hands and tried to uncurl my fists. Let's be honest. If things had been different, I reckon we'd both prefer to be home with our family. I pulled my hands free from my sister's hold and rushed out of the room. The corridor loomed in front of me. It had never looked so daunting. I dashed down it eager to get out into the fresh air. Guilt was suffocating me. Never Italy came to mind, it galloped back to crush me. Although I couldn't undo what I'd done. Would God forgive me for hurting Mama? Three long months had passed since I'd stepped off the boat, and there had been moments when I'd been overcome with grief and loneliness. At times it had become so unbearable, I'd envisage packing my bags and leaving on the spot. Part of me wanted to run home and comfort my mother. The other half was determined to stand strong, sit out the six-month contract, not let on how depressed I was. Even Vittorio's news hadn't brought the satisfaction I'd hoped for. Nothing would alleviate the pain in my chest. No one could fix the consequences of my acts. Too late for that. Taking long, calm breaths of the cool air, I crossed the courtyard to the manager's office. Time to rid my mind of these confused thoughts and step into persuasion mode. I needed an extra bed for Florinda.